In this guide, I will walk you through how to calibrate any computer with a built-in display running Windows 10. This would include any laptop and all-in-one desktop PC. I'm Art Suwansang, x Right Colorado. Let's get started. Before we start, there are a few things that you need to do to prepare your computer for calibration. The first thing to do is to turn on your display and leave it running for at least 15 minutes or more. This would give the display backlight the opportunity for it to warm up and stabilize. This does not really matter if your computer or display is brand new or if it is a few years old, and it is regardless of backlight technology, so that's something to keep in mind. Secondly, what you want to do on your PC is go into the power setting so that turn off display on plugin is set to never. This way your computer display does not turn off in the middle of the calibration process or in the middle of you warming it up. Secondly, put the computer display to sleep is set for at least one hour. This way, again, your computer would remain on and not go to sleep during any of the process of the calibration. From there, what you want to do is right click on the desktop and go into display setting. In here, there are a few settings that we need to turn off in order to get the optimal calibration possible. The first thing that we need to check here is making sure that night light is set to off. If night light's on, your computer screen will go warmer at certain time of the day, depending on when you have that set up. So you want to make sure that it remains stable in this case and the color temperature of the display does not change throughout the day. Secondly, what I'm gonna do here is on my Dell laptop PC, it doesn't have an ambient light sensor, or in this case, it doesn't recognize on my system. So I'm gonna show this to you on a MacBook Pro running bootcamp, and this is running Windows 10. So again, under display setting, and if you have this option right there, change brightness automatically when lighting changes, make sure that you uncheck that box. And that is extremely crucial because as you take your laptop or portable computer devices into different environment, what it's going to do is constantly sense the light that is in that environment, the, the intensity of it. And with that option check, it's always going to be constantly changing the brightness of the display. And you want to make sure that it doesn't do that. So make sure that you have that setting turned off. This would also apply for all-in-one desktop PC as well. If you have it in your office where the ambient natural light comes in, many times that can also change the intensity of light in a room and change the brightness of your display throughout the day. So you don't want to have that happen for a professional color calibrate display. Now that we are ready to start calibration, I am going to launch i1 Profiler. The device that I'll be using to do this demo is the x i1 Display Pro Plus. This is their latest color perimeter in the lineup and it's a device that has greater sensitivity and it can measure display as up to as bright as 2000 nits. So once I want Profiler launch, what I'm gonna do is click on the user mode and I wanna make sure that I have advanced selected. This way I can go in and dial all the settings that I want specifically for my calibration. Secondly, under licensing, because I have a colorimeter, if you have an i1 Display Pro or Pro Plus, you will only see three green check mark, that is display, display validation, and projector calibration. For the rest here, what you need is a color spectral photometer that is the i1 Pro 2 or the i1 Pro 3 Plus. So that's just something to keep in mind there. If you have an x right colorimeter, such as the one here, the i1 Display Pro or Pro Plus, when you plug it in and you launch i1 Profiler and it doesn't show you the green check mark for the first three boxes, you don't need to do a transfer license. It just means that the program does not see the device being plugged into the computer. What I would do is change the plug or switch the USB plug on the computer system to double check and make sure that the program can see it. From there, what we're gonna do is move up to the top left-hand side of the display and click on profiling. So we arrive at the display settings screen. This is where we are going to change some of the setting to fine tune our calibration parameter. At the very top, you have your display there, and if you have multiple display hooked up to the system, this is where you would click on it, and the program itself would center itself on that specific display that you're trying to do the calibration on. But because I only have one display here, it's only showing one. Right below it is the backlight technology. In general, my recommendation is to leave it at the default value because x is always constantly updating their display database and it's generally going to pick the best one possible. However, if you know for a fact that your display backlight technology is different than the default one, you can change it there. Or, for instance, if you have gone through the calibration and the result doesn't come out quite as good, it's always a good idea to come back and revisit this and change the backlight technology. Because I have an OLED display, it's already recognizing that I will leave this at the default value. 
Right below it is white point. So we can change our white point to any value that we like. However, I recommend keeping it as CIE illuminance of D65. The reason why is because at 6500 Kelvin, our eye sees the most color at this spectrum. And the other thing too is that majority of the other displays out there are calibrated to D65. This way, when you're working on your photos or when you're editing your videos or doing any creative work, you're doing it on a white point that's going to be really close to other displays that are out there. The other thing too is that I would also keep the illuminance of D65 even if I'm doing printing. Right below that is luminance. For any creative workflow, my recommendation is to set your luminance level between 80 to 120 candela. This way, what you're looking at your screen will match really closely with the print brightness, but this is also a really good value to use for video and also other type of creative work as well. I am going to choose 80 candela for my luminance value. Something to note here is that you don't want to push your display luminance below 80 candela because by then you're compressing the tonal range of the display so much and you're not going to get a good result. Down right below is gamma. I am going to keep my gamma at 2.2 because I do photography work. However, if you do video work, you can always come in here and change your gamma to BT1886 as well. Contrast ratio, I will leave that at native. This way the screen will calibrate to the contrast ratio that it is able to show. Flare correction, uncheck that. Ambient light control or ambient light smart control, make sure that that's unchecked. From there, you can click on the workflow right below here. The next one is profile setting or click on the next. Under profile setting on a PC computer, it already defaults to ICC profile version 2. However, if it doesn't do that, you always want to make sure that you come back in here and change the ICC profile version to version 2. This way, the profile doesn't conflict with the operating system and causes weird color to happen. From there, click on next. In this screen, we have the opportunity to choose the amount of patch set that we want to use. How many colors are we measuring? My recommendation here is always to set this to large. This way it's measuring the most color set possible for this specific program. Once you're done with that, click on next. And in this screen, we have now arrived at the measurement screen. A couple of things here that we want to change in this one is making sure that ADC automatic display control is turned off because if you have that on, i1 profiler is going to talk with the display firmware and it's going to adjust the brightness for you automatically. And in ideal situation, that is great. However, it's like flying blind in a way. So we turn it off so that we can manually dial up and down the setting and that will give our computer a brightness number how many from full brightness or from the lowest brightness possible to have us achieve that proper luminance, that proper brightness level again. This is also where you would have to come in and check adjust brightness, contrast, and RGB gain manually. So making sure that is checked. Once you're done with these settings, click on start measurement. Tilt your laptop or your all-in-one desktop PC display back is going to guide you specifically for the device you have because I have a colorimeter device it's telling me to take this flip the cover over to expose the lens and hang it on the display. It also tells us to tilt the display back this way the device is laying flat on the display eliminating any contamination light that could come in. A few things to note here before we start the calibration is that you don't have to be in a complete dark room to calibrate. I have two lights going here. This will calibrate just fine. And if you ever look at your color calibration device, there is always a felt lighting around the parameter device preventing any light from coming in anyway. Secondly, another question that I get from many users is, do I have to set my system to a specific profile before I run the calibration? And the answer to that is no, because the moment you launch i1 profiler, the program automatically gone in and have applied a linear profile. This way there's no bias in your system whatsoever before the calibration. Acknowledge that you have the device flat on the screen. In here, under the profile my display, you have two options. You have contrast and brightness and RGB control. So I'm running on a laptop. There's no RGB control here. I will leave contrast and brightness check. Click on next. What it's going to do right now is run a few preliminary calibration patches and it will also then read out the brightness level of the display. What you want to do here when you arrive at this screen is turn your display brightness up to full. 
For my computer here, the shortcut key is function F12. Your computer may be a little bit different, so make sure that you consult with your computer manual and find a shortcut key for your display brightness there. Now that I have my display tuned up at full brightness, it's now reading the value at 391 candela. That's way too bright. I want it down to 80. So I'm going to hold down the function key and press F11 to bring the brightness down. While I'm doing that, I'm also going to count how many notches I have to come down from full brightness until I reach 80 candela. So let's try five in this case. One, two, three, four, five. So at five right now, I have achieved a measured white luminance of 92. Let's try six and see what happens. Let's go down one more. So at six, my display is showing 61 and that is way too dark. Again, I don't recommend going anything below 80. So I'm gonna go up one to just five. So the number of brightness from full brightness down for my laptop here is five. Another thing to keep in mind is that because you are running on a laptop PC and you're relying on these notches system, which is the best way to get the color back to the proper luminance level, it is okay if you don't land exactly on the value that you have chosen. In this case, I have the value at 92. It's not quite 80. And if I have chosen 100, it's not going to be quite at 100 either. But in this case, 92 is within the range of 80 to 120 candela. And as long as you can get within that range, you're okay. Now, the only thing you have to do is choose whether you want the lower end of that range or the upper end of that range. I'm happy with 92. From here, click on Next. The program is going to calibrate 461 patches and at the end it will also then do an iterative profiling process. What I'm going to do is walk away here, speed this process up, and then I'll come back when this is done and show you how you can validate your display and see how accurate your profile is. So now that the calibration is almost done, it's doing some verification at the end there. That is the process that we call iterative profiling, meaning that it's double checking some of the colors that you have measured before to make sure that you have the accurate result. From here, what you want to do is take the colorimeter off the display, put the cover back on it, and leave it on the table. Next, it will tell you that the measurement was successful in this case, so that is great. And we will click on next at the bottom below there. In this ICC profile screen, this is where we will come in to save our profile and also give our profile a name. What you want to do is make your profile name as descriptive as possible because when you try to set the profile in the setting, it doesn't give you the parameter to files. You can't really go in there and inspect it. What I'm gonna do is name this profile XPS 15 as my laptop. It's an OLED backlit, so I will put down OLED. I will put down the date also, and I will use the convention of year, year, month, month, day, day, backwards that way. And what I can do here, you can always note to yourself how many down from full brightness. What I'm gonna do here is remind myself with the profile name and put down D5. This way I know that I have a dial down from full brightness by five notches. Click save profile. It will generate the profile and it will say successful and it will give us a few readouts. So it will tell us what our white point is, the target, what we have achieved. The black luminance is native because I have an OLED. It is at zero, which is really amazing. The luminance itself is 80 candela, contrast ratio is native. So what you want to do next is right down here, there's this thing called display QA, click on that. What display QA will do is that you will measure the standard x right Classic 24 patches and see how close your profile is to these reference color. What I'm going to do is already have that checked by default, the backlight technology matches. Something to note here though is that if you have come in and changed your display backlight technology during the calibration process in the first display setting screen, you want to make sure that it matches here as well. Because this is already on OLED, I'm good. Click on measurement or next below, doesn't really matter, and it's click on start measurement. It's going to ask me to prepare the device again, hang it from the screen, making sure again that it lays flat. Click on next here. This will measure 24 patches and this will go much faster than the original calibration of 461 patches. So now that we are done with our validation, take the device off the screen, click on next, and this is our calibration report. So at this point, what we can do is change the Delta E type if we want. Delta E 2000 tends to be good. I'll leave that there. 
I will change the average threshold to two with the maximum threshold to five. So in general, having a display that can show a delta E value of anything less than five is good. Anything less than two is considered fantastic. And what delta E does is that it describes how the colors are being shown is far off from the reference color. So again, if it's only like below two, that's generally really good. All of our patches, we were able to pass everything with the average Delta E of 0.7. That's really amazing. And secondly, on all the patches, the maximum Delta E is 1.5. Again, this is still below two, this is good. From here, what you can also do is save this report out. It will save it as a HTML file and I'll just put it onto the desktop there. And the other thing that you can do here is add this to trending. So I'll click add to trending and I'll show you what that is. So in trending, it just puts one dot there because I only have one calibration so far. Essentially over time, what you want is either the trending to be straight or going down. If your trending start to go up, that could be an indicator that something is starting to happen with your display with the backlight technology or something like that. So keep in mind, if your trending is going up, what I would do is recalibrate to see if the trending would come down you know, in the next calibration. Let's take a look at the report. This is what the i1 profiler report looks like. So it pretty much is a summary of the screen that we just saw there with the measured value, the max value, and it also gives you the actual RGB and lab color readout there. So that's quite interesting. And it also gives you the Delta E for each of the specific color. Very similar to in the program, just in a tabular format, makes it easier for you to see the data. One more thing too is that in the screen, when you're done with the calibration where you save the ICC profile, the moment you have done that, the system has already gone in and set the ICC profile for your display so you don't really need to go in and set it again. But if you want to double check, you can always do that by doing a right click on your desktop, display setting, and what you want to do here is under color profile, making sure that is the correct one that you have just set right there. Because I have done two calibrations, there are two profiles here. So I'll leave this one because this is my most recent calibration for the system. So I hope that you find this guide on how to calibrate any Windows 10 computer with a built-in display helpful. I'm Artsu Wansang, X-Rite Colorado, and I'll see you in the next video.